All right, let's let's um, let's begin. So, well, first off, really happy to be here today in front of um, a crowd of uh, very sophisticated people. This is a very specific event. I'm with uh, someone today who fits right in this crowd, who's, who's Julie Roach, uh, CRM manager at, um, at at BVG. I don't know how to pronounce the full BVG. Berliner Bekehrsvertreter. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you, Julia. <laughs> so I know the the panel discussion was. Um, advertised only with Julia's face so I'm not I'm not piggybacking on on her uh, panel discussion we were set to we were set to talk together today uh, my name is Simon I'm the I'm the CEO and one of the co-founders of uh, of batch um, we are a, a customer engagement platform um, so for today we have a uh, we have four uh, four topics for you guys so quick introduction um, in Germany, no one knows about Batch, so I'm just going to say a few quick words about what we do. Uh, we'll introduce BVG, but I'm assuming more people here, uh, maybe some of you have come using the, the Yelby app Oops. or one of the, one of the BVG apps. Um, so we've been working with Julia and her team for like a year, year and a half. So lots of, lots of challenges to get this project off the ground that we'll uh, talk with, with Julia. Um, we'll talk about some of the growth results that the app has got since uh, it launched in 20, 2019. We'll showcase some of the CRM engagement tactics that um, we've been uh, we've put in place together with uh, the batch team and, and Julia's team, and then um, we'll also talk about uh, some of the next steps we have for the for the project. BVG has. Uh, the specificity to you know, operate um, on very long periods of time. That's one of the, uh, I, I would say, differentiators of, of BVG as opposed to many mobility startups. BVG has been on the market for 94 years and it's probably here for uh, decades not. more. So different time scales. And we'll talk about what we have in stock uh, for, for, the, for the future. So just I'll, I'll just take one minute because again uh, the feedback since this morning is that no one knows Batch, so I'm, I'm just going to make a quick introduction. <laughs> introduction. We've been in the market for we've been in the market for seven years, but we were roughly a hundred people. French company based in Paris. We're a customer engagement platform, so we help um, cons large consumer brands orchestrate user personalized user experiences across push notification, email, uh, in-app messaging, um, and, and web push. Uh, so we've been around for seven years. We bootstrapped for a very long time. We only raised 20 million euros for the first time in the history of the company's life la last year. Uh, we operate in more than 20 countries. Uh, we deliver north of 500 billion push messages per year for all our clients. Um, and we're investing heavily in, in Germany these days because uh, we have this very strong, what we call radical approach to data privacy. We host all of our users, all of our client users' data in, in France on physical servers. So nothing never leaves the, the EU, which is something that uh, resonated with, with Julia and his team. Uh, we work with 350 clients um, in the luxury, retail, media, finance, and mobility ca categories. Uh, in Germany, we work with brands like Velt, like DM, obviously BVG, the FC Bayern, and, uh, and, uh, and a few others. Um, and we bring a few, what we call core differentiators to the market. Uh, we try to remain a very, very simple product. Uh, we live in a world where customer engagement and CRM products have become um, insanely, insanely complicated. And that complexity tends to dominate people that use those softwares, not the other way around. So we. Our product team says no a lot. Uh, that's what they. That's what they say. Uh, we still bring very sophisticated platform, lots of uh, personalization options that we'll show you afterwards. We have this radical approach to data privacy, and and ultimately we we try to fit uh, deeply in the ecosystem. So in Germany, we're very happy to work with great partners like uh, Customlytics, for example. We integrate with 50 plus technology partners, CDPs, analytics. We're going to talk about Traffy. Traffy as the mobility as a service platform that BVG is using to run Yelby. Enough about Batch. Um, I'm going to hand it over to Julia and then the rest will be just a conversation. Um, so maybe 
we have two slides here, a little bit about BVG. I'm, I'm assuming some of you are familiar with, with what BVG is, but maybe for the others, quick reminder, and then we can tell, you can tell us about ELB, and then we'll dive into the, the challenges in the CRM strategy. Sure. Yeah. yeah? Thank you for the introduction. Uh, sure. yeah, like you said, hopefully you all came here with public transport. <laughs> BVG is the public transport company for Berlin. Um, we currently um, have four apps, which is debatably maybe a bit too many, but there's a far info app, there's a ticket app just as a very quick uh, and short way to buy tickets. Um, we recently launched the BVG Mova app, which is a ride sharing app for the eastern part of Berlin where there's not so many public transport options, so people can still be moving around. And then lastly, uh, Yelby, like you said, was launched in 2019 as a mass platform, so mobility as a service platform, um, which is the team that I'm uh, in, and it's uh, supposed to be the your one-stop shop for mobility in Berlin, so not just public transport, but also um, all the shared mobility that has recently um, popped up everywhere. So the bike sharing, the scooter sharing, car sharing, everything that you have. Um, and all of those, or most providers that are on the Berlin market today, um, are deep integrated into Yelby, so you only need the one app, you don't need the 10 different apps from every single provider, you just have your one BVG account, you add your payment method, and then you can find, book, and pay through that in Yelby, which we think is is great. And uh, yeah, BVG, um, like we identify as like the heart of the city that keeps people moving, hence the, the heart logo that we have, and so obviously we welcome all other forms of transportation that people can share, and that uh, yeah, lets people keep their personal car at home. Excellent. We should maybe we should have tried like you know by applause or by sure raised hands. hands. Yeah, who who's using and who's who in the room is using a one-stop shop mobility mobility hub for inner city um, movements? One, two, three. Oh well, that's a lot. Oh, that's cool. No, uh, do you want to? Should I ask who's using Yelby in the in? in? I mean, yep, yeah. Yes. <laughs> we have a f oh wow, we have some Yelby users. Goodness. Excellent. That's cool. <laughs> Great. And uh, yeah, I was having dinner with this guy, Axel, last night. So he was telling me like the one-stop shop, one central account payment is really, really convenient because uh, there's so many e mops and e-scooters. And you can just, one of the top features of the app you were telling me is the the uh, the, 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 scanner, the scanner, right? Scanner. You can you can just mm -hmm. input your details once and then you scan any e mop service and then you're, and then you're good, good to, to go. go. Yeah. yeah. Oh, excellent. So yeah, and also one of the very interesting bits you were telling me about the what you're doing is that you know a Berlin app for Berliner um, run by a, an institution that is not going um, anywhere um, as opposed to and I guess this is an interesting segue for the for the the, the few challenges that we wanna we wanna discuss but you know the mass the mobility as a service so we're a French company we're in Paris but we 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 live the same experience with which is you know we nav on a daily basis we navigate a, a city that is littered with. Uh, dozens of different bike, e mob, e scooter sharing uh, services. So, I guess the same, the experience is the same uh, everywhere. But do, do you wanna, do you wanna walk us through um, maybe the, like the inception of, of the of the project, and then maybe tell us about what you know, what 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 are the trends that have uh, marked this market over the past couple of years? What has changed and where is it at? Yeah, where sure. is it at today? Yeah, I'd love to. Um, so we started out in, uh, in 2019 with Trafi, which is our development partner um, from Lithuania. And uh, we got a very um, yeah, advantageous um, or beneficial uh, press review by, by Forbes that called us the new, uh, the new Amazon for transportation, at least for Berlin, because we're on a local market. That was very exciting. Um, as you can see, there's a lot of uh, mobility service providers in Berlin um, that should be about all. There's already been some consolidation, right? Um, we share went to Miles. Bird actually now left the market. Um, Tier bought next bike. So there's a bunch of stuff happening. And if you had one of those apps, now you probably won't use it anymore. If you had Yelby, you could just stay and switch to a different <laughs> different provider. It's very easy. Um, and we have, except for on-demand, we currently don't offer um, right now, but all the other transports you can buy in uh, in Yelby. And uh, yeah, that's our d the idea is to get everyone in eventually. Noting that you have the unfair advantage of being the only one able to sell. Public transport tickets, yeah, correct. Yeah. So that's the main advantage, one of the main perks of using uh, of using Yelby. Yeah. So yeah, so navigating a pretty a pretty complex uh, pretty complex market, and also well, you know, by race end, it was interesting. But you were also telling me about 
you know, the many challenges of uh, evangelizing what you guys call multi multimodal transportation. So in the Yelby app, you'll find is it six or seven? Seven. Seven modes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can you yeah. can you can you elaborate a little bit on the sure, on yeah. the demographics and the, the yeah, different sure. usage? So as I mentioned before, seven different um, modes. We do find that um, a lot of users stick to one mode, which I guess is great, but obviously maybe. There's so many use cases for, to move around the city or you need to move your IKEA shelf or whatever. Um, so we we do want to encourage users to try out different modes. Um, maybe you're too lazy to after the club to, to walk home, you'll call a taxi. Um, so that's, I think there was a, a talk by a feature earlier that, that talked about North Star metrics. So maybe the the number of modes could be our North Star mm -hmm. metric that we're trying to, to promote and get up. Um, we do find that um, the majority of your user base is male, kind of like 30 to, to 39 uh, years of age. Um, interestingly, like the individual mobility providers have the same tendency. It just seems to be a thing across the board, not mm -hmm. just for BVG. Um, for yeah, normal, regular users, um, they use 1.3 modes. Now, in fall, it could be up to 1.9 modes on average. Um, for heavy users, it is currently uh, they use 1.9 point modes on average. Uh, could be up to just over two. So that's something that we're really trying to to get up. Yeah. Cool, awesome. Um, the next uh, really really big topic of discussion that between us when we started the project, and I can see a few faces here in the room who's been who have been um, filling. Dozens of uh, Excel pages uh, when you Sorry. when you put out the uh, the, the tenor uh, is uh, data privacy. So um, what we realize coming from the French market is that in France um, corporations will tell you that data privacy is important, and then they'll do the opposite, or that they'll just don't care uh, about it as deeply as they expressed it uh, early on. We, what we discovered in Germany is that it's the other way around. Like, like, oh, like enterprise clients are going to be very, very adamant on, and then they'll enforce it. So, you know, given the the differentiators we we bring, we've been very curious about that. But you know, that was a big thing. And maybe tell us a little bit, Julia, about the, the BVG policy on on data privacy. Yeah. So about two years ago, I started I started at Yelby three years ago, and then sh shortly after I. Uh, I started. I started looking for a CRM tool because BBG did not have a CRM tool uh, yet. Um, so I started looking. Obviously, there's a lot of uh, American players on the market. The big tools. I was like, oh, these these look great. And then along came uh, Shrimps 2, the uh, yeah the um, the verdict that made the Cloud Act um, unnecessary or through overthrew it. Um, and then our legal team was like, so by the way, you now can only be using. Uh, European-based tools and like no data is supposed to be going anywhere else outside of the EU. I'm like, great, let me just uh, quit my job and find something else. No, didn't do that. Um, I just tried again. I searched again on the European market and uh, yeah, I found Batch and they had the patience to uh, yeah answer all our questions and uh, yeah fill out all the Excel sheets like you said uh, that our legal team put together. Um, it's, it took a while. It was very exhausting, but at least now we know <coughs> Um, what is happening to our data, or actually what isn't happening to our data, and uh, we know it's safe. So we're very happy about that. Cool. Awesome. Thank you, Julian. And also we were helped a lot by your friends at Custom Lytics in this, yes. in this process. <laughs> um, one, of the, one of the other challenges that we discussed when we were preparing this, this panel discussion is why you, you, know, you still need to, so you operate on a, on a, on a five-year Budget is that it? That is renewed every. So there is a uh, transportation contract in Berlin um, that is made between the city of Berlin. BVG is a public company, so it's between the city of Berlin and um, BVG, which basically sets the funding for the next couple of years and for that funding, what we're supposed to be delivering on that. Um, and luckily for Yelby, we're actually part of this contract, so the city has some, uh, yeah, has trust in us that we. Um, that we could do some good for the city, make it a bit uh, greener, um, and yeah. So in the end, you're, I mean, you, you end up operating a, a fairly, you know, high impact, uh, sophisticated project with a very small team. Yeah, we're like limit. 20 people yeah. plus Traffy who, who develops, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, and that's, that, that is interesting as well. I mean, that's, you know, that this really fitted in our philosophy of... Uh, 
um, keeping up keeping keeping a simple product that can be integrated easily and can be operated by by few resources. You know, again, coming back to this idea that m most tools on the market tend to dominate the people that use them and not the other way around. So that was interesting to see how you you and I mean, in the end, you guys operate the you operate the service and you outsource pretty much the entire uh, development, whether the front end or, or mm -hmm. all the core services. And mm -hmm. that was an interesting, uh, interesting approach. And by the way, so with, tra with Traffy, you run like a two years long POC uh, to demonstrate the value before Bef we before we actually with them. Yeah, before yeah. we put out a tender. And now it's for at least five years we're huh. going to be working together. That's cool. And uh, last but not least, um, the biggest of the biggest of your challenge, Julia. So this is the this is the this sort of CRM master map that we have at Batch to sort of you know map our client sort of uh, maturity levels in terms of uh, CRM practice, and also in order to map all of the different touch points that can be activated with with Batch at every step of the of the customer the user journey. And I mean, we work with, it's funny because we work with huge companies, huge clients, and, and this map uh, sometimes is operated by I don't know, dozens, sometimes hundreds of people across the organization. And with BVG, it's just, just one person uh, doing everything. So yeah, what is your... It's a bit, it's a bit daunting. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure like we're definitely, unfortunately, not yet covering all of those, uh, all of those uh, use cases, but yeah, I'm... The one, the first person at all of BVG who has been around for this long with the title CRM manager, so that was exciting, but but daunting. And yeah, like you said, I I try to to handle as much uh, as I possibly can. Um, if everyone else is also a one-person team, feel free to reach out after <laughs> so we can discuss ideas, because it is uh, it is tough, right? Like I'm in my own head, in my own bubble. Like I obviously try to come up with campaigns that make sense. Um, but it is good to, and I obviously can talk to Guillaume and your team who help out, but sometimes it's good to have a peer just in the in the company to to do that with. Cool. So yeah, I mean, nice nice little segue for diving a little a little deeper in some of the um, in some of the results that we've been able to come up with um, in the first uh, in the first year of uh, operating Batch as a CRM tool for YLB. So um, obviously we were trying to come up with the KPIs that you guys track. Uh, so you were telling me obviously you know traffic, new installs, MAUs. Do you wanna do you wanna elaborate a little bit on yeah, the sure. on the KPIs that you keep an eye sure. on? Sure. Yeah. So obviously installs. It uh, yeah might not be the most important metric, but obviously we need to know that people know of us and uh, are happy or interested in in downloading the app. We look at monthly active users, but. Um, more importantly, so at what we call monthly active riders, so the people that actually not just use the app to maybe look up um, a route, but also then to, to book a service. Um, we were also interested in the how like how long it takes people to convert. Like the first micro conversion would be a payment added, because um, with my like activation uh, campaigns that I'm running, as we'll see later on, that's obviously something that is interesting to me. So right now, that's about it. like people do it usually within the same day. Um, the time to first ride uh, from install, that's about like two two to three days. Um, and then uh, the multimodal ratio, as I was uh, mentioning before, like how many modes does a user uh, does a user use on average? Yeah. Cool. And so in terms of uh, in terms of uh, MAU growth and, and messaging activity, so we, yeah, I think we started a year and a half ago, starting with the messaging activity like a year ago roughly so some some pretty cool results so obviously you know challenges of um, getting an app uh, started from the from the ground up uh, but interesting to see those um, those results um, we also look so, so these are the, the ELB KPIs I, I would say um, these are the most sort of s standard uh, standard um, uh, CRM KPIs that we that we look at this is a quick snapshot of the batch the batch interface for a campaign that was delivered. So this one, I think, well, the sorry, the, the rendering is pretty shitty, but I think it was the one you guys sent uh, when the bird service was uh, discontinued, like pretty much overnight. Two days ago, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, was not our uh, decision, but they tried to leave the German and the European market because there's just too much competition on the on the kick scooter market, right? So it's sad for, for us and the users, but yeah, obviously we, we have to tell them. And it's a good sort of illustration of, of you know, some of some other differentiators we bring, which are around you know, real time, the ability to, mm -hmm. uh, 
uh, react really, really quickly when you when you run a mobile uh, mobile first service for mobility purposes. You know, when something that sudden happens, it, it really discontinues the, the the quality of the service you bring, and that you need to be able to launch a push notification or in-app messaging campaign in, in a few minutes. Otherwise, you'll start seeing uh, you know user complaints. Yeah. Uh, come in pretty much instantly, right? So yeah, it was it was supposed to be not sudden, and then we checked the app, and they were gone. And yeah. then I got, I'm going to reschedule this push for right now. No. <laughs> How cool. Um, so yeah, a couple KPIs about you know, the the number of um, what we call opt-in users, the people that have given permission to be reached out to through push notification, the MAUs, and the average opt-in rate. So you guys probably know that opt-in rates vary a lot. Uh, between iOS and Android, um, specifically because Android has an like opt-in per default uh, mechan me mechanism where iOS requests uh, permission. But um, we've ran a very long blog post on the new Android 13 update, which is going to change Big this change, and will yeah. bring um, Android and iOS on par in terms of uh, um, uh, collecting user consent. So this is going to this is going to change in the in the coming month. Um, and then maybe uh, for the for the for the for the end of the second part, we want to dive a little deeper in some of the use cases. So our approach when we start working with clients, and when we want to map their use cases in the sort of pre uh, pre sales um, pro project setup phase, is we we use this as a CRM manager I want to methodology, uh, and which then we translate in data that will be that we will tag. Uh, and that will come up on the platform so that you can use it for s targeting and s uh, personalization purposes. So, um, yeah. yeah, Julia, if you want to maybe walk us through a few simple but effective use cases that you've been able to implement. Yeah, probably the most like no-brainer one is, the, is welcoming new users, which I'm sure you all uh, do. So after they've installed the app, I will uh, try to get them an hour later by welcoming them and getting them to uh, register an account or just log in with their BBG account that they might already have from a subscription uh, or from the other app. Um, and if they don't, uh, yeah, and if they haven't done it three days later, I will na uh, yeah, nag them again um, and five, five days later as well. Unfortunately, we don't really have uh, incentives right now, which would probably make this a bit more effective also in the in the rest of the user journey, but we're working on that for next year. Cool. Uh, um. Yeah, and same for the onboarding. So say they do actually have uh, uh, an account they've registered, but for some reason they haven't, like why would you register and then not use the app? So we're trying to nudge them towards uh, adding a payment so that they're ready to go, because uh, that's all you need, unless obviously you want to use car sharing or mopeds, then you will also have to verify your driver's license and your ID, but everything else you just you can just use. Um, and then obviously uh, trying to get them to the first ride, to the first like big happy moment that will then hopefully keep them coming back. And of course, Batch allows you to set cancellation events. So if, if the user happens to do it within the time frame that I've given, then he's not going to get that message. Mm -hmm. um, and then other general retention campaigns. We we did have a form, or we yeah, do have a form of vouchers this year, but it was mainly just handing it out. There's no like digital process yet. Welcome to PVG. Everything takes a bit longer. Um, but uh, we went to some events and uh, we had vouchers. So I was at least able to remind people if they dropped under a certain amount, hey, don't forget to, to use your voucher before it, um, oh yeah, before it goes away. Um, we're also obviously trying to uh, reactivate inactive users. Uh, for example, 30 days later, if they haven't uh, opened the app in a while, we're trying to win them back again, hopefully soon with more incentives. And then um, whenever we have a new uh, mobility provider joining or we have a new big feature in the app, obviously that's something we want to announce. The most recent um, integration that we made was with uh, Six Chair, which is, I think, Six is a very big um, yeah, brand in, in Germany, very well known, so obviously that also helps drag people in. Um, yeah, maybe more personalized. Um, I'm not sure how many of you live in Germany and uh, yeah, benefited from the nine euro ticket. That was uh, a cool thing we had this summer where like for, from August, uh, August, September, July, you could, oh no, June, July, August, whatever, for three months, you could use public transport in Germany for free, all, like all across Germany, just for nine euros. Um, 
great deal. Um, they're kind of bringing it back with the Deutschland ticket next year for 49 euros, but it's still a good deal. Um, so obviously we promoted that and um, for the people, I, I tried to use different messaging for the people that already had bought tickets before and the people that were purely using shared mobility, again, to get that multimodal rate up. Um, also, um, depending on the seasonality, um, in summer you're more likely to use a scooter than, I guess, right now in winter when you're just freezing your hands off standing on it. Uh, so trying to promote the different um, modes and also if I see that a, a person has only used one mode or like I said before, just uh, public transport tickets, I'm trying to get them to try out new stuff. Mm -hmm. did, um, did we have this one? No, we have two more. Okay. Well, yeah, term prevention, very important. Um, if, uh, if a user uh, did install the app and did everything they, like all the micro conversions that they were um, supposed to, but are somehow not using it, I'm also trying to, to, to get them there and nudge them there for, for a whole lot. Yeah. And then finally, we have uh, some of the in-app messaging formats yeah. that we provide that you use for user feedback collection. Yeah, exactly. So product team is obviously always interested in improving the app and trying to find out what works well, what is maybe still missing, what are clients wishing for. So everyone, like maybe once a quarter, will run a survey um, to, to ask about some specific stuff. I think the right one was actually a BBG-wide um, survey where they were looking for people to partake in our like customer council, which is kind of like we test out new ideas on them and then see how it goes. Yeah. Cool. Thank you, Julia. So these are just some of the use cases that you can uh, that you can implement with with the uh, the platform. Um, so just you know, this is the final final step, and then I'm, we're obviously happy to take a few questions if there are in the audience. Uh, just a few words about what what is coming next. So um, we've just released. So we obviously we work with clients, and we share the you know, at the beginning of each year, uh, the general roadmap on which we, uh, on which we are uh, working. The story of Batch is that we started as a very simple product for delivering push notifications at scale, and then we evolved into a, a complete sort of omni-channel CRM, CRM system, leveraging the live data we were getting from our uh, different web and mobile SDKs. Um, and at the core of the big roadmap we have for this, this year is something I'm incredibly, incredibly excited about, which is a little counterintuitive because you know, email marketing has been around for 30 years, so it's not the most crazy innovative thing, but it's been the top requested feature uh, by our client for, uh, for the last, I don't know, seven, seven years. And so we, we took this year, 22, to uh, release our email marketing, uh, event-based e email marketing solution plugged into the, the batch platform. Uh, and that is now enabling um, an, an increased amount of more, more sophisticated uh, omni-channel use, use cases, because obviously in the Yelby app, while well, users will, will log in and they'll also leave their email. And uh, this is gonna be uh, enabling lots of, uh, lots of different use cases across different channels and the idea is obviously to be able to communicate with, well, you know, mobile, mobile app users but not just on mobile because they can be obviously on mobile but there, there might be moments of the day where it's easier to reach them in their inbox, for example. So we've, we've brought this year a new, new Canvas product that lets our clients create user journeys and um, run scenarios such as, you know, I'll be based on any specific event, I will send a push notification if, it, if it's not opened in X amount of time. If I have an email and an email permission, then I can follow up with, the, with an email. And this enables, um, I mean, uh, you can, with this you can maximize how you communicate with, with users and you can keep boosting your, your KPIs. And all of the use cases we covered, well, you, you, you can now do, do with batch across uh, this very, very old but also very, very efficient channel that is, uh, that is email. So all of this we will be working um, over Q1 with Julia and her team to implement. So keep an eye, if you're, if you're a Yelby user, keep an eye out and, and please opt in for, for, email, <laughs> for email communication. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, that was, uh, that's about it. I think we, uh, we used a good 30 minutes. So uh, thank you everyone. Thank you for your attention, for thank being you. here today. Yeah. Thank you.